Hi, welcome to this, the first video in my series on how we go about solving inequalities where we're dealing with fractional types and in that fraction, in the denominator, you've got some function of x. Now I'm assuming that you're familiar with solving linear inequalities and quadratic inequalities. Now to solve a fractional one, what we don't do is go ahead and multiply both sides by x. The reason being is because we don't know whether x is going to be a negative value. And if it was a negative value, then the inequality sign here would have to be reversed. We can only multiply really by a positive value to both sides. So to get around this situation, what we can do is square this function of x that you see here. So in this example, because we've just got simply x here, if we square it, we're obviously going to have x squared. And x squared will be a positive value. So what we do is we multiply both sides of the inequality by this positive value, x squared in this case. So we've got x squared times x minus 2. The inequality stays exactly the same way around and then we multiply the other side by x squared. So we've got x squared times 3 over x. Now all we need to do is expand the bracket. And so if we expand the bracket here we've got x cubed and then we've got x squared times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. We've got less than and obviously this x cancels out with one of the x's in the x squared here, just leaving us with 3x. Now we've got a cubic here, so we need to subtract 3x from both sides and make it less than 0. So we get therefore x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x is less than 0. And we can factorise this if we pull out x as a common factor. We've got x bracket x squared minus 2x minus 3. And that's less than 0. And if we factorise the quadratic factor here, it does factorise in this example. It factorises to x minus 3 and x plus 1. And so that would be less than 0. Now just like we handled quadratic uh, inequalities in the past, we found out the critical values. We found out where this equaled 0. So we've got the critical values, okay, therefore the critical values. What are they going to be? What are the values of x that makes this equal 0? Well, they're going to be x equals 0, or we'll have x equaling 3 or we'll have x equaling minus 1. All right. Now, what we would do is we would draw a graph, a sketch graph of y equals, say, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x, knowing that these critical values are the points where that graph crosses the x-axis. So we'll just sketch it over here. OK, so we have our x-axis, our y-axis, and we've got our critical values at minus 1, 0, and at 3. Now, it's a positive x-cubed graph. It cuts the x-axis then at 0, 3, and minus 1. So for a positive x-cubed graph, it's going to come up like this, through the minus 1, over the top there, through 0, down and then up through the 3. So it's going to look something like that. Now, we're looking for where the graph is less than 0, below the x-axis. And you've got to be careful with these kind of questions because sometimes in the question you'll see that we can't divide by 0. So Really, we should define this inequality that x cannot equal 0. 
And be aware of that because in some questions that I've done in the past, I've noticed that textbooks don't often put facts like this where you can divide, where you can't, I should say, divide by zero. So in this case, x cannot equal zero. So from the graph, okay, what are the solutions going to be? Where is that inequality less than zero? Well, clearly it's where you've got values of x less than minus one. You can see this part of the graph is below the x-axis. So we've got x is less than minus one. Or you can see that it's less than zero when we're looking at values of x between naught and three. So we've got x can lie between naught and three. All right, and that's our solution. If this question had been that x minus 2 was less than or equal to 3 over x, you've got to be very careful because you could have x is less than or equal to minus 1, but because x cannot equal 0, your answer here would be x would be still greater than 0, but less than or equal to 3. So as I say, be very careful with these kinds of inequalities, because sometimes they won't give you this fact here. Now there's another way that you could solve this inequality, and I'll show you now how it can be done. Another way is by drawing the graphs of x minus 2, and 3 over x, and then comparing where they intersect and comparing then where one graph is above or below the next graph. I'll show you, okay? Let's just come over here and we'll sketch these two graphs. So have our axes then, x-axis, y-axis. So the first graph I'm going to look at is say the graph of y equals 3 over x. Let's just draw that. 3 over x is a graph that's going to look something like this. The graph of 1 over x, if you like, stretched out by a factor of 3. So essentially it's going to look like that. Let's just extend this line down there. Okay, so we'll mark that on. That's the graph then of y equals 3 over x. Now we'll look at the graph y equals x minus 2. That's a straight line graph, gradient 1 going through the y-axis at minus 2. So you're going to have a graph something like this, okay? And that would be the graph then of y equals x minus 2. Now we're looking for where the graph of y equals x minus 2, the green graph, is below, less than, below the red graph of y equals 3 over x. And for that to be the case, we're interested at these points where the green graph intersects the red graph. Let's label those points A and B, say. Okay. And these are going to be of interest to us. So we'll just say at A and B, how are we going to work those out? Well, we need to find out the points of intersection. So it's just simply saying x minus 2 has to equal 3 divided by x. So to solve this, we would multiply both sides by x a. So if we did that, we're going to get x squared minus 2x equals 3. Quadratic equation, so we need to rearrange this, make it equal to 0. So if we subtract 3 from both sides, we're going to get that. And we've been here before. Look, we've had it over here. We can see that this factorizes then to x minus 3 and x plus 1. And that would equal 0. So we can see from this that x must equal 3 or x equals minus 1. And looking at the graph here, you can see that the minus 1 must correspond to the coordinate, the x-coordinate at A, so that's minus 1. And this point below B here must be the x-coordinate 3. 
Okay, it's not drawn to scale, but that's not really the point of this. Now, as I said earlier, if we're looking to find out then where uh, x minus 2 is less than 3 divided by x. Remember, x cannot equal 0 though, all right? If we're asked to solve this, we're looking for where the green graph is below the red graph. And so it follows from this that if we look where the green graph is below the red graph, you can see that here it is here for this stretch of values of x below minus 1. So we can see that x is less than minus 1. What else? Now this is where we've got to be very careful because in this next stretch can you see the green graph is below the red graph between well greater than 0 but less than 3. Remember that the y-axis is an asymptote so you can't equal 0. All right? So it's between 0 and 3. So you've got x lies between 0 and 3. And that obviously agrees with what we've got here. So two methods then that are fairly typical of ways that you can go about solving these kind of fractional inequalities where you've got x or some function of x in the denominator. I'll do one or two more uh, examples for you in other videos which are a bit more complicated than just having an x here but essentially this is the method or these are the methods that I would encourage you to go for. Okay.